This is Apostle Esther Aguirre from Alpha and Omega International Ministry of Faith, Sugarland, Texas, in the United States of America. I'm bringing the word of God you, to you raw this afternoon. And I'm so happy you are here today. Somebody's life will never be the same. Somebody that has been tormented, somebody that has been abused, somebody that has been disgraced, I want you to know that this is the day of the Lord and your situation will surely change. God is about to do something that will shake nations. So I know he will start by blessing somebody in this prayer mountain. So get ready. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. That everything you hear today. My God will turn it around for good for you. In Jesus name. So at this time we are going to the word of God. We are going to the word of God quickly. In Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. I'm going to read verse 8 and verse 14. Verse 8, verse 9 and 14. Verse 8 said. And it came to pass, it came to pass that in the morning that his spirit was troubled. <laughs> Somebody's spirit is troubled. And he sent and called all the magicians and of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. Who do you tell your dream? But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my fault. I do remember my fault. Then in 14, it says, And Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily, hastily, out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his remnant and came into Pharaoh. Listen, my message to you today is surprise me, O oh Lord. Surprise me, O oh Lord. When God remembers you, he surprises you. In this month of September to remember, this is a month of delivery. This is a month where things you've been waiting for since since January to September, you before you get to October, and in your month of October, which is a month of prophetic manifestation. <laughs> Get ready for a change. Get ready for a turnaround. Get ready because we are in the prophetic season of the Lord. And if only you believe, all things are possible to those who believe. Now look at somebody that was thrown in the pit. Listen, do not ever you give up. Don't you give up because God, God is always able God is working something out for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. So I'm talking to somebody. It's like you want to give up. You are in that marriage. You want to give up. Uh -huh. As a single, you say you are getting old. Ask Sarah, how old was she? You say you are getting old. No, age is numbered. Let us wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. I say wait on the Lord. Now look at what you are saying. Somebody that was rejected. Somebody that was disconnected from the family. Maybe you have been disconnected from your family. And you think, oh, I don't have a family. But you have a family in Christ. You have a family in Jesus. And if you know Jesus, everything shall work out for you. So they threw him in the pit. This is somebody he called his own. He went to help them. He went to give them food. But at the same time, they turn around and they stab him. Have they stabbed you? Have you struggled for people? And the only good they did for you is to destroy you, is to condemn you, is to destroy your, 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 your purpose and your destiny. I want to tell you, laugh. Laugh again. <laughs> because my God will surely make you laugh in the name of Jesus. So you see what happened. Yes, he was thrown in the pit. And they thought it was over. Some say, oh, let's kill. kill. The others one say, no, let's not. Let his blood not be on our head. We cannot do that. So anyway, he was sold. Went to Potiphar's house. In Potiphar's house, another trouble. Do you know when your foundation is faulty? When your foundation is faulty and you don't work on your foundation, you begin to move from one level of problem to another level. His own brother did refuse him. This almost destroyed him. Now he went to a place where they even saw the glory of God. They saw the favor of God. And Potiphar gave him authority to reign. But foundation came back again. And this woman began to mis misbehave. Potiphar's wife, sleep with me. But thank God for somebody. 
thank God for somebody that is ready for the destiny to be great. Because the Bible says, if violent, take it by force. Your mind has to be valid, your thought. Because if you don't connect it to Christ, you will fail, you will lose your destiny, your place in God. But he stood the test. Joseph stood the test. When temptation comes, do you stand for Jesus? Do you stand and say, this too shall pass? When temptation comes, do you know you have a savior? Do you know that God will never let you down and to say no to temptation? So Joseph said no. And the man set him up. But the setup was for good because he was on a journey. I'm telling you somebody today, you are on your journey for your divine purpose. So things may come. Storm will come. After the storm blessings, uh -huh, that is why God will surprise you because the storm that he wanted to swallow you, God has turned it to bless you in the name of Jesus. So at this time, saints of God, he, she set Joseph up to destroy him. But thank God, Joseph was connected to God. And Joseph was taken to jail because he refused to sleep with another person, with his master's wife. You see, have you been there before? Don't give up. God knows what you are going through. Do not be weary in well-doing. <laughs> For in due time, I feel like, I feel like jumping. I, I feel like jumping. For in due time, you shall reap if you faint not. So what happened in jail? He was made. <laughs> A leader. He was that director there. You know, when you carry the anointing, they cannot swallow your anointing. The Bible says it is the anointing that destroys you. Your foundation may be speaking, but when you stand in authority, you stand in power, you are victorious in the name of Jesus. So at that time, says of God, he was doing his job, then met these two, these two, 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 two captains from the from jail, uh, Pharaoh's uh, servants, and they came because of what they did. But he not, they dreamt and he now interpreted the dream. He interpreted the dream. For Baker, he said, you'll be hung, you die. And that was true. For Butler, he said, you'll be promoted. God, yes, you're getting a new cup and God will increase you. And it came to pass. So at that time, he settled with Butler. He said, remember me, when this thing begin to happen, huh? remember me. Remember me, don't forget me. But something happened. As I'm saying, when you have a foundational problem, things will happen to block your way. Things will happen to stop you. Things will happen to bring shame, to turn your, your gain to shame. Uh -huh. But I've come to tell you that things are turning around. Woman, things are turning around for good. I feel like dancing with somebody right now. Because I know my God is able to do abundantly above all that he has promised. Have they rejected you? Hold on to God. Are they planning to destroy you? Hold on to God. See what happened to Joseph. Now Joseph interpreted that dream. Then Butler forgot that in verse 9, the, in verse 8, we are being told that Joseph, Pharaoh called everybody to try to interpret the dream. He called all to interpret the dream. But none could interpret. Listen, whatever is yours, nobody can take. That's something you know. They may push you. They may persecute you. They may curse you. Like now, so much persecution. But stand firm. Don't give up. God is with you. If God be for you, who can be against you? So just know that at the end, there's a treasure. So at that time, nobody can interpret the dream. But then, Butler remembered. Do you know that God can be silent? But he's working it out. When God is silent, he's about to show up. He's about to surprise you because he's fixing it together. That is who our God is. So Butler now remembered and he began to tell Pharaoh all that Joseph did. Somebody will recommend you today. I'm telling you, somebody, I did not come to play football here. I came to tell you, thus said the Lord. Somebody is going to recommend you. Somebody is going to catapult you. That divine helper. That you lost before. That divine helper. That people distracted from you. They gave you all bad names. They called you names that your parents did not give you. But then they disconnected you. He's coming back. Even you that your husband packed away from home. He's, he's coming back. You that you are separated right now. Living like goat and uh, dog and cat in the house. God is going to repair that relationship. Know that God is about to surprise you. Look at the surprise. Pharaoh called for Joseph. At that time, Joseph must have been giving up. Oh, this thing I did, look at it. How long? He promised. Have you gone through some promises that did not work? God is a God of promise. His promises are yea and amen. He that has started a good work. <laughs> he 
that has started a good work is able to complete it. Listen, son, daughter, I want to tell you, it is not over yet. Hold on. Hold on. I see people owning great businesses. I see people owning great companies. And I see contracts everywhere. No power. As I speak, that anointing is falling on you now. Take that anointing to prevail. Anointing to be a winner. Anointing to be a conqueror. You are more, more. More than a conqueror, I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Yes, so what am I saying? Don't give up. Joseph was surprised because he never thought that Butler would remember. The Butler remembered. I want to tell you that your, your blessing is knocking at the door. Your miracle is knocking at the door. Never you give up. God will surely show up for you. So, but before he left, before he went there, the Bible says he shaved. He shaved his beard. He looked clean. He looked neat before the king. Are you hearing me? He changed his garment. I want to ask you, how many of you go before God clean every day? How many of you know that it's good to present yourself as a living sacrifice before God? That we cannot go with him, to him daily, sin, condemn. We, we condemn ourselves with sin before we get to him. No. Cleanse yourself. Cleanse your heart. Let your heart, because the Bible says our God is holy and you should be holy. So let us stand before him blameless. And that is what we are expected as children of God, to stand before God blameless. May that be your portion. So after he changed his jail garment, you can't go with that destructive garment. You can't go with the garment of shame. He has already prepared a way for you. So when you cleanse yourself, he does all. Do what you can do in the physical. God completes all for you. So Joseph went there, cleaned everything. But what did he, he was given? A dream. And he interpreted the dream. Do you know that when God makes a way for you, he makes all things possible. God cannot call you and he condemns you at the same time. God cannot say do this and he stops you. There's an opposition. There's a power that wants to oppose you. But I want to tell you that today it is over. When you connect to the tree of righteousness, just hang in there. Hold on to him. He will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. So right there, he interpreted a dream. Right there, he interpreted it real. And now, Pharaoh gave him that position of second in command. There is somebody here today in that job. They have been tormenting you. They have been fighting you. But I want to tell you, it is because of your journey, your divine journey in life. God is going to turn it around. Hold on. Hold on. There is no gathering that can stop you in the name of Jesus. Look at, look at Hannah. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, Penina provoked Hannah. And the Bible says, God has already shot Hannah's womb. But Hannah knew that one day my God will fight for me. She kept on depending on God. Every day they went to Shiloh. Every day they went to Shiloh. And thank God Elkanah, the husband, loved Hannah so much. Loved Hannah with all. Gave Hannah a great portion. But Hannah was not satisfied because at that time he was violent. Let me say he was violent in the spirit. This is the time to be violent in the spirit. Yes, we cannot stay religious us and begin to waste our time in one spot. It is time. The Bible says the violent take it by force. So Hannah went through some situation of depression and all. But he came out and when they were going to Shiloh that last time, that last year, Hannah took his sacrifice, everything, her sacrifice and went before God and was in the spirit. In the spirit. Talking in the spirit. Bubbling in the spirit. Yes. Yes. Praying some kind of prayer of inquiry prayer. Some inquiry prayer. Lord, do something. Huh? Do something new in my life. The Bible says in First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 19, they arose. Listen, it's time to rise up. They arose early in the morning. It's time to rise up early in the morning with the belt of prayer. Stand up in prayer. Stand up knowing who your God is. Stand up depending on your God. I'm talking to somebody that your destiny shall never be. Prayer is the key. It's a central line that is never busy. It's your connection to God. Never you ignore prayer. Early in the morning, he rose up. They began to worship. This It comes a time when you have prayed, prayed, prayed. The next thing is to worship. That's why some people don't understand. You don't pray, pray all your... You worship. You worship and you magnify him. That is why this Friday, we are doing international praise and worship. If you are here, try to be there by 10 p.m. 10 p.m., 10 to 2. Come and praise God for what God has done for you since January to this, this, this end of the month. So what are we saying? He prays. And when they went home, the Bible says Elkanah knew his wife. What are you telling me? Are you telling me that Elkanah, as much as he loved Hannah, has not been knowing her wife? 
not be having a relationship with his wife. He did. But that was a special moment. That was a special season where God heard the praise, where God heard the prayer, where God was there to surprise somebody, to surprise Hannah. Hannah, your tears is over. There are some Hannahs here. I want to tell you your tears is over. There are some Hannahs here that thought it, God is not hearing them. But I want to tell you your time, your Samuel is on the way. The seed of your Samuel have been planted already. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. So at that time, the Bible says Hannah conceived. And Hannah, who was there? Samuel. Your Samuel is on the way. I'm talking to somebody. Never you give up. Samuel will show up for you in the name of Jesus. Your Samuel. What about, what about Genesis chapter 21 verse 1 to 3? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 21, 1 to 3, God visited Sarah. Hey, Kelly. Is somebody ready for a visitation today? According to his plan, according to what he has said, according to what he has spoken. Listen, when God speaks, don't bother what man talks. Some men, they just talk, talk, talk. Some of them have oral diarrhea. All they talk, talk, and it's not effective. When God speaks, hold on to. Has God spoken to you? There are some proph prophetic words that has never come to pass. I want you to hold on. In the month of October, it is a month of prophetic manifestation. That all that God has spoken, you begin to see in your life. In the name of Jesus. And Sarah conceived. <laughs> Sarah that was old, 90 years, conceived. And brought to Abraham a son. <laughs> and Abraham named the son Isaac. <laughs> Listen, husband and wife. This is not time to blame each other. Who is whose fault? It's time to hold on. The Isaac is there. Have you been waiting on something and it's not coming? Are you single? Your Isaac is coming. Your boss is coming. Let us continue to hold on to God. Whatever God has promised, he will surely bring to pass. The Bible says, uh, Sarah conceived and born. This is somebody that people have abandoned. Have they abandoned you? You know how to, if our people, they will talk, uh, is it two men that are in the house? Nobody, nobody's getting pregnant. She's not getting, so she's two. You people are two. You went to marry a man instead of marrying a woman. You know how people talk. You could imagine what Abraham went through. But I thank God for Abraham. Even the mistake he made, we thank God. He got into that it was. And I thank God for Sarah for keeping her faith in God. But what happened? The Bible says she bore a son called Isaac. I want to tell you, your Isaac is on the way. I mean it, your Isaac is on the way. And in verse, the Bible says, and Abraham circumcised his son. You are getting ready to circumcise that blessing. <laughs> that business is about to be inaugurated. That project is coming up. Yes, somebody is about to holler. <laughs> you are about to shout. The Bible says in verse 6, I want you to follow up with this. I love this, I love it, I love it. In verse 6, the Bible says, and Sarah said, <laughs> God had made Sarah to laugh. This is what the enemy does not want you to laugh. That's why he wants to take you to depression. Never you go into depression as a child of God. It may linger, but it will come to pass. Sarah said, hey, where, is, where are my enemies? Where are my friends? Where are those that put me down? Where are those that laughed at me? He who laughs, laughs, laughs best. So he's saying, God has made me to laugh. And all those that hear, all those that hear this good news that a 90-year-old will produce a son, they shall laugh with me. Even my enemies that hate me, even the blockers of my destiny, even the destroyers of my destiny, even the conspirators that thought they would destroy me, when they hear this good news, that my business is no more tied, that my job, they promoted me in that job, that me, single, 40-something years old, going to 50, even 50 years old, at this time my boss shows up, Ah, they will say, hey, their, their plan failed. What is it? That school that you cannot even, you cannot pass out of that school. When they hear, they will hear your success in that school. I'm talking to somebody. They will hear that you pass that entrance exam, that doctorate exam, that law exam. They will hear, I'm speaking today. Your days of sorrow, your days of affliction, your days of destruction, your days of shame are over. <laughs> is somebody laughing with me right now? You want to, I want to, wherever you are, laugh. Laugh. Just give God some laughter. <laughs> laugh like you have never laughed. Laugh the highest so that they will hear you that those that think you can never laugh, let them hear you laugh in the name of Jesus. The Bible says Sarah laughed. Why? They have called you failure. 
It's time to laugh because your success is coming. Yes, they will hear your good news. They've called you barren. They've called you rejected. They're giving you all kinds of name. I've come to tell you today that my God is changing your sorrow to laughter in the name of Jesus. He's turning your scar to star. Have they given you scars because of continuous bruising? God said, I'll turn it to star. So why did Sarah say, why did Sarah laugh verse 7? And she said, who would ever, who would have said, who would have said that Abraham, <laughs> yes, sir, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah will bore to him a son? Who would have said that dead womb, that dead uterus, monoposal age, chronic world, will, will produce? Listen, you may have been failing in that exam, you may be having failing in life. You may have been failing in business. You may have been failing in some stuff. I want you to know that it is not over. Who would have said you passed that exam? Who would have said to Apostle Elsa that she would got, get her endless results, her exam? Who? Nobody. They gave up. They get, maybe they've given up on you. <laughs> Do not give up. Who would have said? That was why Sarah laughed. I want you to laugh because you are catapulted out of that situation right now. You will accelerate this season. I'm talking to somebody. You will accelerate because my God will remember you and will visit you. That is surprise. When God remembers you, he visits. He surprises you. Look at the, the 120 at the upper room. In, in Acts chapter 2, they were praising, they were praying, and they, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came. Can you imagine? They suddenly surprised and it changed, began to give them all kinds of tongues, all kinds of gifts. That is what you are expecting right now. My God is releasing an unusual fire, an unusual anointing. If only you can stay in a position of receiving, if somebody can stay in the position to receive, you will get it in the name of Jesus. It's like when God turns the captivity of Zion in Psalm 126, verse 1 to 3. It was like them that dream. It was like them that dream. When, when they have heard your news too much, some of them are blocking their head. This is too much for me. I beg. They will come and say, how did you do it? Ah! How did you come out of this situation? It is all about God. It is all God is about to do something new. Oh yes, sir. You have been sowing in tears. I want you to know you reap in joy. You are going to reap in joy. Crying. You have been crying. God is wiping away your tears. And using your tears to baptize you with victory. You have been crying and you don't understand. What am I going through? Just it's okay to share that tears. Because those tears are not wasted. They are being bottled. They are bottled for your victory. They are bottled for your success. They are bottled to give you a, 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 a smile or make you laugh again in the name of Jesus. To change your shame to fame. I'm talking to somebody. Now look at the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. Read from 5 to 9 or 11. The Bible says, listen, God, Jesus visited the pool and he saw this man. And he asked, don't you want to be made whole? Don't you, why is it that it was this man that Jesus went? You know, when God remembers you, it does not matter the creek you are. It doesn't matter the jungle you are. It doesn't matter the village you are. It doesn't matter the position you are in the church. When God remembers you, he, surprised, he shows up. He, he visits and he shows up with his miracle. God does not show up empty. It's not a man. He shows up with that thing you have been expecting. And I've come to say the expectation. Hey! Kaposa, your expectation shall not be cut short in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody is getting this blessing right now. The man at the pool. Jesus said, don't you want to be made whole? He said, ah, no man. I don't have any man to put me in. That is enough to, for Jesus. He said, okay, stay there. But Jesus said, listen, you don't even know. You don't have any man. Now pick up your bed. Pick up that bed and walk. I've come to tell you, you have been limited for too long. You have been stagnant for too long. You have been abused, bruised, brutalized for too long. Now take it. That thing that kept you back, rise up. Hold it in your hand and shout victory. Come on, shout victory. Somebody shout victory in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout victory in the name of Jesus. This is the time to shout. Yes, because this man, instead of him to go back the way he was for 38 years, the man had been on that pool 38 every year. Can you count 38 years? How old are you now? 
You are only 20 something. You are angry that you are not married. 38 years. How long have you struggled with that situation? And you are worried God has not answered you. God wants to surprise you. God wants to visit you. God wants to change your situation. God wants to make his plan come to pass in your life. The Bible says Abraham staggered not. You just have to stand in faith. You don't need to stagger. You don't need to cry. You don't need to feel disappointed because God is able to do it in the name of Jesus. God is able to do abundantly above all. So when Jesus told him that in verse 14, when Jesus met him again, this is somebody that they tied, but now he was released to go and tell people how God has done it. What God, listen, your situation is not to destroy you. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it to good. Listen, there are some of you that have been kept in one position. When you were meant to become a senator, a governor, a preacher, an apostle, a bishop, stay, hold on to God. It will surely come to pass. When God turns it, you will see it will be like those that dream. So what are we saying? When Jesus met him telling people and so on, Jesus said, listen, now go and sin no more. Go and sin in verse 14. John chapter 5 verse 14. So our sin can keep us bound. Our sin can keep us in a position that we cannot move because sin is a reproach. Sin is a barrier. It's, it's darkness. It can lock you in a situation. But when you confess your sin, the Bible says it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Is there lot in your life? That lot, maybe the lot is your sin. Maybe the lot is a family member. Maybe it's a lot. That lot is a distractor. Somebody that distracts you, tell you bad story, gossips, bad bites, distracts you from the truth. Listen, this is a time to disconnect from lots. This is a time to disconnect. But thank God for Abraham. Abraham prayed for Lot. In Genesis chapter 19. If you read 19 verse 16. Even because of the prayer of Abraham. Listen, don't stop praying because God may be using you as the Abraham in your family. God may be using you as the Joshua that will lead your family to the other side. Don't give up and you have to stand firm because they don't know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Don't be pushed here and there like a reed. Hold on to God. All shall come to pass as planned in the name of Jesus. So right there, because of prayer, the Bible says that God wanted to protect, take Lot out of Sodom. And he said, he sent an angel and told Lot to leave. Lot, the two daughters and the wife. But Lot was still lingering. Are you still lingering in the place of destruction? Are you still lingering with that sin? Are you still lingering? And you, don't, you are confused. Today it is over. An angel is going to visit you. And as I'm talking, receive that visitation in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the angel grabbed him, threw him away, grabbed him, took him out, grabbed the two daughters and the wife. You see, when God starts something, he completes it. He that has started a good work will surely complete it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in 27, Abraham went to stand in that place of prayer. Abraham stood in the place of prayer early in the morning. How long, how many days have you been waking up early in the morning? Since of God, laziness should go. Laziness, we should stop being lazy. These are the days of Elijah. Elijah was not lazy. Elijah faced 440 prophets. Elijah faced Ahab. This is no time where children of God will be backing out. It's time to push. It's time to push. It's time to run towards your enemy. It's time to run with faith. The bad, listen, Abraham got up early in the morning and as he stood before God, the Bible says he began to see smoke. Read 27, 28 and 29. He began to see smoke. God was showing him the sign of the destruction. And God was saying, yes, I've answered your prayer. So he saw that and God remembered Abraham. God remembered Abraham. As I'm saying, when God remembers you, he surprises you. And took Lot out of the group, took him out and saved Lot. So I've come to tell you today, as far as you can see, as far as you can walk through, God is able to do it. We cannot be grumbling like the world. We cannot be talking like the world. We cannot allow the world to influence us. We are the light of this world. We have to influence others. You are the salt of the earth. Let your salt make it taste. Yes, in the name of Jesus, you have a testimony. I want you to open your mouth say, I have a testimony. Open your mouth and say, I have a testimony. And I must testify to the glory of God. 
Nothing will take my testimony away from me. God is about to do you good and is fighting your battle. Do not give up. He's fighting your battle. If he remembered Abraham, he will remember you. If he remembered Sarah, he will remember you. If he remembered Hannah, he will remember even more. But Esther fasted. God remembered Esther's prayer. God remembered Mordecai. And he showed up before the king, where the king was, and in the king's table. And the Haman that wanted to destroy the Jews was the one that was destroyed. Listen, when God visits you, he destroys your enemy. So what are we saying now? When God visits you, he fights your battle in the name of Jesus. But I'm telling you, it is time to move forward. It is time to possess your land. It is time to take it. This I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. God is about to surprise you. Do you believe God can surprise you? Do you believe if God remembered Noah and he said, listen, I'm about to destroy this nation. Go in the ark. Why are we afraid of storm? God can remember you and keep you in the ark. That divine ark. All it takes is to dwell under that secret place. So that when destruction comes, you are safe in his arm. In the name of Jesus. So when God remembers you, what happened? He re responds to your call immediately. He surprises you. You'll be praying. Maybe you have been praying for years. It doesn't happen. But when he remembers you, he shows up. When God remembers you, he comes instantly and suddenly. When God remembers you, he brings help. There are some people that seem helpless. But when God shows up, he brings help. When God remembers you, he opens your heaven. You think you were born to poverty. No. That's why they say, oh, look at this village boy. See the way he's prospering. Yes, because God remembered you. He poured his blessing on you. When God remembers you, he takes away the long-lasting problem. It's no way. If when God remembers you that they say you are you are, you are barren, he gives, that baby just, you don't even know when you are pregnant. When God remembers you, they say you are poor, he takes away poverty. When God remembers you, he takes away poverty. When God remembers you, he surprises you. He surprises even your enemies. Oh, she passed that, passed that exam. We thought she would fail. When God remembers you, he builds an edge. Even when they go, go to voodoo places, witch doctors to destroy you, God stands for you. He fights your battle. When God remembers you, he rescues you. Even when you are drowning, he rescues you like he rescued the children of Israel. When Moses stretched his hand, they walked on dry land. Listen, God is remembering you today. God will put success. When God remembers you, he gives you success. And I'm telling you today, and he gives you an unending laughter. Like Hannah. Hannah said, those, those that hear this, they will laugh with me. When God remembers you, he gives you an unending laughter. And that is what you are getting right now. When God remembers you, he gives you speed. You begin to accelerate, overtake all that they thought they will keep you bound. All that they thought has kept you bound. This is no joke. When God remembers you, you may not have anything. All of a sudden, you begin to have in surplus. When God remembers you, he takes away that sin. Like he told that man, go and sin no more. So your sin was keeping you for 38 years. Now I've set you, I've released you. So go and sin no more. But in, in Exodus chapter 12, he told the Israelites, listen, I just want you to do something. Because I'm about to protect you. I know the enemy is coming. I know wicked powers are envious of you. But I want to destroy, but I want to separate you. I want to separate you. I want to keep you in a place of continuous protection. Now, when you take a lamb, a lamb that is one year old, that innocent lamb, that innocent one, the one that is pure, kill it. Yes, when you kill it, roast it. You roast it, everybody in the house should eat it with bitter herb, with bread. But there's one thing I'm asking of you. Let that blood that came out of that lamb be put on your two posts. Your two lanterns in your front of your door. Because I'm about to destroy the plans of the devil. I'm about to destroy your destroyer. When God wants to destroy your destroyer, he gives you a sign. And he said, put the blood at the two posts. Because I'm going to pass by. <laughs> the Lord is passing by. He said, when I come, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see the blood as a sign of my child, let us learn to carry the blood of Jesus with us. Learn to call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Learn to call on his name. Learn to con connect with the blood. Engage everything you do with the blood of Jesus. Because the devil cannot handle that blood. Yes, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I see it. So how? How do we give it all to him? 
How do we make him remember us or to surprise us? How will God surprise us? What are we supposed to do for God to surprise us? Number one, number one, flee from sin. Run away from sin. Separate yourself from sin. Be not conformed to this world. There's so much distraction. So much, even in the churches today. Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewal of your mind. Be, be your own, be your own judge yourself. Judge yourself. Are you living right? Let your conscience be your judge. Are you living right or you are pretending? If we pretend you are disturbing yourself because the truth is already out. So let us run away from sin. Resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. Carry the blood of Jesus everywhere. That mark on you. Anoint yourself daily. That's why when you join the prayer line, we do daily anointing. Anoint yourself daily. Because the devil come, goes to and fro, seeking who to devour. Be faithful. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. And be honest. Whether you are in business, be honest. You are in job, be honest. Be true to yourself. Because when you are true, God is true. When you are true, you are connected with God. When you are honest, you are with him. When you are holy, he is holy. He is a holy God. So let us learn to be holy in all we do and be aggressive in prayer. Violent in prayer. Be aggressive in praising. Praise him like never before. Worship him like never before. Even when you are going to do storm, worship him. Even when people have rejected you, worship him. Even when people call you names, don't, and don't fight. This is not time to fight physical battle. I've learned that a long time ago. No physical battle. Go to God in prayer. Go to God. Take your problem to him. And learn to forgive others as he has forgiven us. And love one another. Let us live in a place where you love one another in spirit and in truth. I've brought this word today because I know somebody's going to be blessed. Have they thrown you down? Have they rejected you? Have they, have they given you bad name? Listen, God is the repairer of bridges. God is your restorer. God is your protection. God is your resurrection. God is your beautifier. They can pour dust on you. But when God beautifies you, God is a promise keeper. He's the one that anoints you. And when he anoints you, the yoke is broken. Don't you ever give up. God did not make you what you think you, what you are going through. That is No, God made you specially and wonderfully made. He made you in his own image. How can God make you in his own image and make you a troubleshooter? No, you will have to walk like God. So at this time, you want to say, yes, Apostle, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to go closer. I want to be surprised by him. I want God to surprise me because I've tried everything. Nothing is working. In this marriage, as a single, in this job, in this career, I've done all I can. But even in this business, nothing is working. You want to give it all to Jesus today. Let Jesus handle your case. Now, say, I want to give it to Jesus. Put up your hand. Wherever you are, you are many. Yes, put it up. Yes, this is your day. It's your day of salvation. It's your day of change. It's your day things are turning. When they hear, it will be like those that dream. So put up your hand. And you are going to say this with me. Say, my father, I give my whole life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Forgive me, I know I'm a sinner. I have sinned. I have done wrong. I have gone astray. I've done what is evil in your sights. Forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Wash me with your blood and let your blood be in me 24-7. In Jesus' name. If you pray this prayer, if you gave your life, please, Get a good Bible. Go to a good Bible preaching church. Don't go to where the water, don't go to satanic church. I hear that they are so, so everywhere. Go to where Jesus is. Go to where the fire is. Go to where they will not consume your, your blessing. Go and serve God in spirit. Don't go and look at people. Don't go and say this one, say this one. Disconnect from gossip. Go and serve God because it's God that brought you. Go to a Bible preaching church and give your life. Go and meet the pastor. I've given my life in the prayer line. I gave my life in the Facebook and I want to be a member of this church. So right now, I want to congratulate all of you that have really joined this Facebook today and I want to tell you that your prophetic word will surely come to pass. No matter what you've gone through, hold on to that word. I want you to know that God is not a man that should lie. Are you sick? Receive your healing right now. Have you been be, be tormented? Are you poisoned? That poison is leaving you now. That poison is coming out of you that have breast cancer. The, our God is healing it now. You that they said uh, that you will never make it where you are. I tell you that in 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you join this prayer life, you make it more than they ever thought of. So I want you to be encouraged, to be empowered that your season of miracle has come in Jesus' name. So right now, I want to invite you all that tomorrow I'm having a counseling from 10 a.m. to, and the door is closed by 4. So come, if you have a problem, you want to see me, come, come on time, because people come on time to see me. Make sure you are here on time, but it starts by 10. Then the midweek service starts on Thursday. Be here by 6.30, and this, this week, we are going to anoint our feet. We have been washing our feet for the two services last week, and this week we are going to anoint every feet. So make sure you come to the house with your anointing oil. Bring your own anointing oil. And we are going to pray on it. Bring your own. Make sure we have it in Alpha and Omega. We have the anointing oil in Alpha and Omega. Come with it. Get your own. What I'm saying, bring your personal one. Because you are going to use it. Come and get it from Alpha and Omega. And get it. And we are going to use it to anoint your feet. Everybody will anoint their feet. So make sure you come. And we have two services on Sunday. 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. And it's going to be awesome. Healing service. Come preparing your mind. I am healed. Come, this is this is no time to joke. This is the time to go into God's business and to be totally connected in the name of Jesus. So you all are blessed for joining this prayer line. And I want to tell you that your life has turned. And when people hear your story, it will be like those who dream. You are a blessing in Jesus' name.